Welcome to video number 53 in the Using iTrain tutorial series. My name is Bob. In this tutorial we look at the AND operator used in actions. Welcome back. As we have seen, logical operators allow us to group together conditions and perform either a logical OR operation on that group or a logical AND operation on that group. So far we have only looked at the logical OR operator. And here's a reminder of its simplified diagram. The contents of this dashed box represents the conditions tab in the action. Here's the conditions tab and its contents and this dashed box represents the execution tab in the action. Here's the execution tab and its contents. The conditions tab contains all of the condition tests that we are using in the action and then grouping them together either with an OR operator or with an AND operator or with a combination of both. The choice of how many input conditions there are in a group and what each of those do is up to us. We select those by listing them below the operator. The OR operator is purely an event driven process. It only requires one of the input events to be true for the output of the OR group to be true and which then triggers the execution of the action. Whereas with the logical AND operator all of the inputs must be true for the output of the AND operator to be true. But furthermore all of the inputs need to be true at the same time. And that would pose a problem for a purely event driven AND operation. Because all of the input events would need to occur at precisely the same time as denoted by this orange dashed line for the output of the AND gate or AND group to be true. If just one of those outputs occurred at a slightly different time compared to the others, that test would not be true and the output of the AND group would not be true and therefore the execution of the commands would not go ahead and in this case the light would remain off. If we have a condition with multiple inputs as in this case, the percentage chances of all events occurring at exactly the same time within a fraction of a second is extremely small 
and so the condition would probably never be met and therefore the action would not be triggered. To resolve this problem for AND operations, iTrain uses both the event and the state. These steady periods here provide a window of time during which the state of the element can be interrogated. And the events provide the timing for the operation. Remember, an event is the precise moment when the condition element changes state, when it changes from off to on, or on to off, or inactive to active, etc. The state of a condition is the time between the events. It tells us if the current state is on or off or active or inactive, etc. And just to be clear, when I say condition element, I mean the objects listed in the conditions tab here, below the operator. And for an AND operation, the operator would be an AND, of course. So for AND operations, iTrain uses the condition element state or its event. However, not all condition elements are the same. With most of them, the events can be detected and also their states can be interrogated. We will call these dual mode elements. Dual because it can be used as a trigger using its event or as a state. But there are three condition elements that cannot have their state interrogated because the pulse that that element produces is so brief that iTrain does not have enough time to test the state. Block leave is one such element. Only its event can be detected. We will call these trigger only elements because all they can do is provide the trigger for the timing of the tests. Here's a table showing all the different condition elements and how they can be used. As you can see, most of them can be used either as a trigger or a state, apart from these three at the bottom of the table. Block ready, block leave and block release. These are the trigger only elements. All the rest are dual mode elements. And note that this is only for iTrain 5.0.x. In 5.1, there are new action features being added, so that table would need to be updated. OK, so let's define some rules for constructing 
an AND-based condition. Rule 1, an AND group must contain at least one state plus one and only one trigger. OK, so an AND group must contain at least one state, which also means we can have more than one state element. We can have multiple state elements, but we must have at least one. Choosing a state element is easy enough. If we look at the table, we can select from any of these dual mode elements. They can be used as states. In general, dual mode condition elements can be used anywhere in a condition and can be used multiple times in an AND group. However, there are certain types of conditions that need a little more care in terms of how we use them, and we will talk about those later. The rule then says plus one and only one trigger. That trigger could either be another dual mode element which automatically gets utilised as the trigger. We don't need to do anything to make it a trigger. iTrain inherently does that itself. Effectively, if the condition just contained dual mode elements, the last dual mode event that occurs in the sequence of events on the physical layout acts as the trigger. Or the trigger can be one of the trigger only elements. But if that's the case, it must be the only trigger only element in the group. If we had more than one trigger only element, the action is unlikely to ever execute. When a trigger only element is used, any dual mode elements in the condition will be used as states, and the trigger only element will act as the trigger. That brings us to rule number two. If an AND group contains a trigger only element, that element needs to be the last condition activated in the sequence of events on the physical railway. Now, that doesn't mean where the trigger only element is listed in the conditions tab. If we make this one a block leave, which is a trigger only element, it doesn't mean where it is listed in the group here. It is the position in the sequence of events that occurs on the physical layout that is important. The trigger only element needs to be the last in the sequence of the conditions that are used in that group. So in this example, we would need to ensure that the operation of the layout was such that this feedback is on, this feedback is off, and this relay is active before the train leaves the block. 
if the trigger only element is not the last in the sequence of events to occur on the physical layout, then the action is unlikely to be executed. I'll show you why in the next tutorial. But for now, if we follow these two rules, it will be sufficient for the majority of AND-based conditions that we create. And we will refine this even further in future tutorials. So, I hope you were able to follow all that. It's actually quite a difficult topic to present in a simplified way. If you did learn something, please take the time to give it a thumbs up, just so that I know that people are getting something from these tutorials. In the next tutorial, we'll actually construct the AND-based action and show you some of the problems you might hit when creating an action. Hope to see you then. Oh, by the way, I will place a PDF copy of this slide in the user forum. Look in the English section under Frequently Asked Questions, FAQ, and you will see a thread on these tutorials. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.